And, you know, great students make a great school, but also anointed leaders, God's called great leaders, make a great school. So I'd like to welcome up for a commencement address um, our Morning Star president and CEO, Chris Reed. Thank you. Well, as we were worshiping, I was thinking, I don't want to try to let the air out of your balloon. As, and then I heard something pop. And uh, students, faculty, family, friends, and graduates, I want to congratulate you on this grand achievement. Morningstar University, class of 2024. I'd like to read you a verse that I believe is very relevant to you as this day speaks of a transition in your life. I think you would all agree to some degree. In 2 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 12, and David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. That verse resonates with me so much and David perceived that he was king. Now, as I looked into this transition in David's life, I began to see some real interesting comparisons that I think would be fitting for you. If David suddenly perceived that the Lord had made him king over all Israel, it also means prior to verse 12 that he didn't perceive it before. The crown had been sitting on his head and the people were calling him king, but he didn't fully comprehend that the Lord had made him as the king of Israel. He hadn't had that epiphany yet, that realization, the gravity of what that meant, the authority that came with that position, the possibility, the potential, the future, and what he could accomplish. David's internal struggle seemed so clear to me as I read this verse. I believe the powerful key hidden in that verse is David's perception of who God had made him to be. And I thought of David's journey to the throne. I mean, he could defeat a nine-foot-tall giant named Goliath when the rest of the entire army of Israel was frozen and paralyzed by fear. Why would becoming king be so difficult for a man who could slay a giant that no soldier could? I always thought of David, I'm sure you have too, as a greatly gifted man, a man of great faith, a man who experienced unusual favor from God on his life. We know David was a worshiper, a man after God's own heart. He's the one that we get the term heart of David. He knew how to trust God. He experienced great victories in his life. He united the 12 tribes of Israel as one nation. He established Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. He, he knew what it was to experience victory. He even overcame great integrity challenges with truly amazing grace. But I never had thought about or considered the idea that David could have struggled with an identity crisis. I always thought of him as this bold, cutting edge, front lines, confident leader who was going to write history and change the world. He seemed like a born winner, a born achiever. It seemed like moving from one victory to the other, the lion, the bear, then Goliath. He set records and did things that men only 30 and 40 years did before him. I mean, he did everything so young. But what's interesting is in this verse in 2 Samuel 5 and 12, David had, had already been king over Judah for seven and a half years. And then the elders of Israel came to him at Hebron and anointed him to be king over all of Israel. Of course, then David and his men, they went to Jerusalem. They defeated the Jebusites that laughed and mocked him. 
the Jebusites who had occupied part of the land or the territory uh, before Joshua and Joshua's con conquest until the time of David. So even David, this really speaks to me, even David and all of his achievements didn't fully grasp, even after he'd been king seven and a half years, he didn't grasp that he was the king of Israel. And I think these identity issues, knowing who we are, why we're here, is something that every person has to grapple with. It's normal. And I think his experience shared in Scripture is a lesson for all of us who decide to yield our life to God to become in what he has determined and envisioned for our life. How many of you want to live out the God dream? What God has written about you in the books from before the foundation of the world, before you were even thought of by your mom and your dad. And by the way, I thought it was interesting as we were preparing uh, back in the MSU room, I walked up and met some of the parents. And when I saw the mom or I saw the dad, I know whose parent you are. I could tell by looking. It's that family resemblance. But to live out God's dream in our life or what he has preordained or planned for us, it requires many shifts in our thinking to stay in pursuit of God's vision and plan for our life requires us to constantly be able to allow the Lord to shift our thinking. And the enemy will attack you without a doubt. Like climbing a ladder, each step becomes so important in the journey to get to the top and whatever that means for you. It took faith for David to defeat the lion. It took faith for David to defeat the bear. It took faith for David to defeat Goliath, but it required identity for him to take the throne. Faith brought David victory again and again, but identity would be needed to fulfill his destiny and purpose. Faith believes what God can do. Identity believes what God will do do you know God can work through our faith to bring about his ability but identity is the most important thing and I know the time that you've spent in MSU has really been trying to help you find and establish know who you are in Christ not just what the world says about you or even what family says about you but what is God speaking saying plan for my life so that you can step into the fullness of God's purpose for your life, the fullness of your identity to complete your heavenly assignments on earth. Because the truth is, until David perceived that he was king, his activities didn't fully match up with his destiny. Let me say that again. Until David perceived that he was king, until he got it, until he had that gotcha moment or awakening or epiphany, whatever you want to call it. Until he was perceived or until he had perceived that he was king, his activities didn't match up with his destiny. When you perceive, and I hope you do today, what's happening. When you perceive your new position in life, whether it be ministry, whether it be career, whether it be marriage, whatever the step may be, your goals, your purposes, activities, all of that stuff will shift as you enter this new season that today is triggering in your life. And that's why it's so necessary for you to embrace your present identity because you'll stifle and block and hinder or even delay all that God has called you to do if you don't walk in identity. Your life won't be as fruitful, you won't see as much result, and you won't be as effective as you possibly could be. Because you are not only here to fulfill your destiny, you're help other people, to help them find theirs and enter theirs as well. And if you ever allow yourself at any point in time in your history to get stuck in any season of your life, in some past hurt, some past disappointment, or even defeated by partial success, does that make sense? You can even feel defeat from partial success and give up even on parts of the dreams that God has put in your heart. 
But we see all throughout Scripture, and I think it's true for all of you as well. The end of one season was usually coinciding with the beginning of another. And with a season shift also requires an identity shift. You have to see yourself and see God and how God sees you with a new level of clarity. You know, when Simon Peter was given the keys of the kingdom of heaven in Matthew 16, everybody always talks about the first part of that conversation when Jesus asked, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And of course, famously, Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus's response, of course, is famous. We've talked about it, sung about it, preached about it all of these years. Flesh and blood did not reveal your answer to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Behold, you are Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When Simon Peter got a revelation of who Jesus was, Simon Peter then got a God revelation of who he was. Because the only... It's a partial revelation to get a revelation of who Jesus is. But once you get a revelation of who Jesus is, you've got to allow him to give you a revelation of who you are. Increase responsibilities. Change in environments. These are often connected with seasonal shifts that are also required with an accelerating identity. Not that you are constantly changing, even though that's life is full of change. You are who you are, but allowing to see yourself in a gradual perception of who God sees you. And life is all about one bit at a time, the fogginess being removed from us, from being able to see ourselves the way God sees us. With new seasons and opportunities comes new honor, new authority. It all coincides with a greater revelation of identity. God's new mercies are truly available to you today as you step into your next season. As you graduate, whether you are staying here or you're moving on, God wants his mercy to guide you each day and bring you fresh insights to experience him in a greater more intimate and deep way as each day passes. As his mercy breaks into our life each new morning, old patterns, behavior patterns, thought structures are also removed out of our life that allows the new season of our life to have complete fullness. At the core of a destiny shift, is also an identity shift. The way we see ourselves is necessary to achieve and reach our destiny. Because if you can't see yourself correctly, then how can you see anyone else correctly? You can't speak provision, blessing, healing over anyone else. You can't give what you don't have. And so allowing the Father to speak over you today, and I believe he is, if you can... Tune your ear to the voice of God, just as we know Jesus, of course, was uniquely the only begotten sons of God, but we are adopted sons and daughters. And I just wish today, just as Jesus was transitioning at the beginning of his ministry, transitioning out of those years of silence from the age of 12 until the age of 30, he transitioned into that new season at the age of 30, finishing 18 years of silence by the Father speaking over him by saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. So your future in God is tied to you accepting and perceiving who you are in him. You have to know what God has said about you and agree with it and say amen to it. Because in every shift or change, we have to have a clear understanding of whatever God has wanted to delete out of our lives or de-emphasize or even redefine because those things are necessary in every in the birthing of every new season. God wants 
to affirm your identity so old past limitations don't become present and future ones. The truth is, is King David's unusual historical success. I mean, when you th talk about the greatest king of, of Israel, the first one that comes to mind, of course, is David. He was committed to overcoming struggles, navigating challenges, and remaining faithful to God in each season. But as you grow and step into this new season of your life, be prepared. There's a lot of maturity that's going to have to happen suddenly. You'll mature the rest of your life, but there are certain moments in life where you mature quick. I was 20 years old when I became a father. I went from being a 20-year-old young man to suddenly a dad with responsibility. It was a new season. That's just one example. There's a maturing, growing, testing process. And every season with its shifts and different associations, new people, level of responsibility, causes you to see the world through a new lens. You cannot see the world through the lens of your friends and family. Not that you can't learn from them, not that you can't uh, receive impartation or encouragement from them, but you have to see the world through a biblical lens and through the identity lens that God has given you. It's true. Assignments can help reveal identity, whatever your assignment is in life, whether it's the workforce, the marketplace, whether it's ministry, whether it's missions, whether it's continuing on in education, whatever it might be, assignments can help reveal identity, but they cannot be the source of your identity. Assignments cannot be the source of your identity. My assignment in life is to lead a ministry, but there's going to come an age and a time where I can't do it anymore effectively. So when I retire, I can't die when that day comes. I can't suddenly die when I step out of whatever I've been doing for 30 or 40 or 50 years. And you know, many people, <clears throat> healthy people, I've seen it, you've probably seen it or heard of this too, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever career or field they were in, they retire and because they don't shift into the next season, because they don't allow change to affect them, they become so locked in a previous season that when they retired, their health plummeted quickly and they died when their career did. That wasn't what God's best was for them. But it's because they didn't perceive who they were and what season they were in and what came with it. So the security in knowing who you are, and I hope that you've helped, uh, you've been helped to discover your identity, who you are in Christ here at your time at MSU. It has been a delight to be able to spend at least once a week with teaching the students. But the truth is, God will not continually to anoint who you were in your past season. He's going to anoint who you are now. We can't come to God and say, all right, God, this is all I've ever known. Bless it so I can keep doing it. God says, no, I'm going to anoint the future you. I'm going to anoint the you for this season. And so every life shift is built upon our response to the challenge of the present. And we cannot rely on the victories of old seasons, prior seasons, or even the attachments that we had to those old seasons and the people that were in them. Some people will stay in your life, some people won't. But Jesus is that unchanging yesterday, today, and forever person who wants to stay in your life. The last step of an old season is usually the first step of the new. God has built something in many of you over the last one, two, three years here at MSU. You can choose to forget it. I doubt you will. It's probably going to impact and mold you in every decision you make, in every career choice, whatever path you choose in life. The time you spent here will influence and affect you just make sure whatever you go, whatever you do, that you do it with the fear of the Lord, with ever-growing integrity, and being willing to be flexible enough to accept the changes of atmosphere and environment 
in each new season and situation to say, Lord, I'm here for you, not for myself. I don't have a personal agenda. I'm committed to fulfilling your purpose. And today I believe God is going to help many of you after maybe three years of being here, some of you more or less, and David perceived he was king. And that perception brought about a level of achievement that he only could acquire previously through faith, through his gifts or talents, but identity took him into a whole new terrain. And so whoever you are, whatever your name is today, you perceived your king. You perceived that you're an overcomer. You perceived that you're intelligent. You perceived that you're gifted, that you have grace. You perceived this is your moment of opportunity to seize it. You perceived that when the times in our world history have been the darkest, that that has been the opportunity for champions to arise when the midst, in the midst of the deepest challenges. I think historically, it was after World War II, after the world went through the crisis of World War II, the healing movement, the latter rain movement started. It was after the Vietnam War and the chaos and division that was brought about in our country that the Jesus people movement began. So as I look around in the world right now and I see all the chaos in a post-COVID world, I spell it out on purpose because we're being live streamed. But in a post-COVID world with chaos and the world and cultures and division and all of these things that we see, this is an opportunity for you to seize the moment to not miss your opportunity to say, God, help me to be the piece in the puzzle, to find my place, to not miss the opportunity, the divine moments, the divine connections that you've put in my path. I'm ready. I accept it. I will willingly, gladly do everything and be all that you've called me to be. I'm not going to be what other people want me to be. I'm not going to be who I used to be. I want to be like Jesus, and I want to perceive who I am and who you've made me to, de to be. David perceived he was king. And I pray today that you, before you leave this place, will perceive who you are and what you can accomplish so that you can take terrain for the kingdom like you never have before. Congratulations to you, to each student, to the class of 2024 at Morningstar University. We're proud of you. We're here for you. We support you. Don't be a stranger. I know some of you are staying, some of you are leaving, but you have a family here at Morningstar, and we bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.